What's going on, people? So the power of fiber optics is a flying modem. Kaja Gamer likes to play competitively. It's been a minute, but let's talk about some gaming news and so on. And we're gonna jump right into it with some Destiny news. Destiny's Iron, uh, right, excuse me, Rise of Iron. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Rise of Iron. Uh, just was released. Haven't uh, played it yet, but I, I do have it available, so I will play it sometime soon. Maybe give a impressions video or something like that. Um, but you know, it, it's a usual thing. It's a Sony time exclusive. So I believe for a year or so you have, you know, certain raids or not raids, certain uh, strikes and missions, story missions are available only to the PlayStation side of things. And that's for a whole year. So if you're on Xbox, you won't be getting that. But uh, from what I hear, it's, it's pretty much, you know, everything you loved and hated about Destiny in a much bigger package. So that's cool. A lot more content. That was, for me, Destiny's biggest downfall, in my opinion. Even though their Destiny has a strong community and so on. For me, the lack of content was big. So... Uh, it's cool that they got a major expansion and so on and uh, people seem there at least the community seems to really be enjoying it so let me know do you have destiny rise of iron are you liking it do you dislike it let me know in the comment section down below let's talk about it so our next story is that battlefield one released its system requirements for the pc now if you're a pc player this is pretty cool because if you've been waiting on battlefield and for it to release the system specs here they are so the minimum specs is kind of up there kind of you know it's for not for well, cpu wise it's kind of up there because they want you to have a uh, i5 6600k that's uh that's pretty high and uh they want you to on the amd side of things they want you to have the 6350 which is their six core so eight gigabytes of ram they want you to have a two gigabyte card, you know, the 7850 for the AMD Radeon and a 660 for the GeForce GTX two gigabytes. And this is just the minimum requirements. Some of these, some games to put it in perspective, use the GTX 660 as its uh, recommended specs, right? So it's a whopping 50 gigabytes of hard drive space. You can use Windows 7, 8.1 or 10, 64 bit, of course. But that's just the minimum when we get to the recommended things it gets a little bit you know wider range but it, it's just crazy so for the processor they want you to have for amd they want you to have an fx 8350 with the wraith cooler i have that one by the way <laughs> so i'm really happy about that and for the processor on intel side of things they want you to have an i7 4790 or equivalent the 4790 is their older, you know, flagship quad core CPU with hyper threading. So if you have, you know, the 6700K i7, you're more than good, you know. So for the graphics cards, they want you to have a RX 484 gigabytes or the NVIDIA GTX 1060 3 gigabytes. Now, for those of you saying that these, that if you're thinking like me, you would say that these specs aren't very what people will say like you know on a steep side or beefy or you know whatever are high-end specs these, these are relatively modest specs the game recommends only four gigabytes of video ram at the most for the amd side of things and then on the nvidia side of thing they only recommend three gigabytes so if you got a 1060 with six gigabytes if you got a 1070 you know or a 1080 of course you know titan x for all you ballers out there but uh everybody with the dual 390s or the 390 or you know the rx not rx but the uh radeon fury cards and so on you're gonna run battlefield one no problem whatsoever and uh that even goes for the people with the gtx 970s you know you're in 980s and above you're more than likely going to run this game no problem 
Now, what I'm not sure is if this is for 1080p or higher or whatever. I'm not really sure what that is. It doesn't say, you know, this is for this resolution at this frame rate. But, you know, th this is what they recommend you play on. So, uh, with that being said, for, you know, more resolution and all that, it's going to take more performance. So, for memory, though, and from what I understand, this is like one of the first games to ever recommend 16 gigabytes of RAM. And I would be surprised if this game actually uses 16 gigabytes of RAM at the recommended settings. I, I don't see it happening, but you know, I could be wrong as we all could be wrong sometimes. You know, I'm human, but that's kind of crazy. So from the minimum, it doubles, the RAM doubles into 16 gigabytes. So, um, when I build my new system, I'm definitely gonna have 16 gigabytes of RAM. But looking at this and looking at the way gaming is going, maybe I should upgrade that to a bit more. But regardless, this is uh, the Battlefield 1 PC requirements from the minimum to the recommended. And I think the reason why these settings are like this is because that they have the Vulcan API in the system. So, really it's not even about the single core you know threaded performance could because Vulcan loads the workload even as evenly as it can across all resources so it's going to use almost all eight threads it's going to use you know the graphics card to the best of its ability and so on so these specs aren't really you know that high end this is very modest and i'm actually very impressed so you know this says a lot so let me know how you feel about it in the comment section down below are you getting battlefield one on the pc or are you just buying it on the consoles what do you think about the recommended and minimum specs let me know in the comment section down below so our next story is youtube the video sharing site is looking for quote-unquote heroes and from what I understand is they're looking for people to apply for some kind of membership or like sign up for this and, you know, volunteer to flag down inappropriate content from like, you know, uh, vulgar videos to racial comments and things of that nature. And it's supposed to be offering some kind of rewards to the people who do this and sign up and so on. And... I don't know how I feel about this because this potentially, if done right, could be a good thing. But that's with anything, with any good idea. You know, everything sounds good on paper. And when you test it out in the real world, results vary. So, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Besides that, if it's done right, it could be a good thing. But on the other hand, like anything, this has the chance to be abused and almost everything on YouTube is abused. So I'm not sure how exactly to uh, feel about this. Now let me know how you feel about it. Would you sign up for this? Or are you someone who flags down inappropriate comments and videos and so on? Some time to time when I see certain comments, I will you know, flag them, like, if I see something that's, like, nigger, you're nothing but a stupid nigger, or something like that, I'll flag that, like, yo, that's inappropriate, you shouldn't be saying that shit, and, um, so on, so, how do y'all feel about it, you know, usual thing, let me know in the comment section down below, I really like to talk about this and see how, you know, some of you feel about this, and if y'all actually do flag down content, so, let's talk about that. Our next and last story, something I'm really excited to talk about because it's Gears of War 4 and I'm definitely getting Gears of War 4. So, I'm already in the market for a GTX 1070. I'm all, I was already going to buy the Gears of War 4 and I was going to buy the $100 edition so I can play it on the 7th, four days early, you know. But then this news came out that if you buy a 1070, you get Gears of War 4 for free. That Microsoft and NVIDIA has teamed up to bring this deal. And I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Perfect. Fucking perfect. I get Gears of War 4 free and I get my 1070. Perfect. So, 
to talk a little bit about gears there's also been news about the um co-op play and bringing co-op play to pc as well i mean uh, split screen play to a pc so that's pretty cool uh co-op play though or cross play is only going to be for the co-op at the moment but i see them adding cross play for the you know pvp side of things which is team deathmatch and so on for the multiplayer to you know bring cross play to that when they add in mouse and keyboard support for the xbox one and so on so that's one thing I can definitely see happening in the future. But I'm definitely excited for Gears 4. I played the beta, multiplayer beta. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. And I can't wait for this to come out. Let me know. Are you thinking about upgrading to get Gears of War 4 for free? You know, does this make you want to upgrade? Does this make you want to take back your graphics card you just bought and go ahead and, you know, get a 1070 or something? You know, it, it's crazy, man. I'm glad I waited and... I'm definitely going to get this. So, let me know in the comment section down below how you feel about this, how you feel about Kids of Wars 4, if you're getting a 1070, if you wish you waited to get a 1070, let me know. So, with all that being said, man, it's the video. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe if you're new. And even if you're not new, well, you can't double subscribe, but you, you definitely leave likes and comments. Let me know if there's some news you would like me to talk about or some opinions or not opinions, but topics you would like me to talk about. And I'll do my best to do a video on that. So with all that being said, man, I'm out of here and I'll catch y'all later.